Hello everybody and welcome to the Barker Cabinets tutorial for Chief Architect. Notice that if you go to Barker Cabinets, if you have not already, and then you go to Design, you can click on this and actually see our Chief Architect catalog here. This is where you could download it. So click on Chief Architect, download the trial version, then you download our catalog right here at that link, download. And then if you want, you can do some more comprehensive tutorials. I'm going to do a real quick start introduction. There's just three minutes. That's, well, actually, I'm not going to beat that. Uh, they're probably better than I am at it. Sorry. All right. Let's get started, though. All right. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Open up Chief Architect. Click a new plan. First thing we want to want to do is change a few things on the defaults. Okay. So let's go to edit, and then let's go to default settings. Double click on cabinets, and double click on general cabinet. Okay. This doesn't really matter. Again, we're going to go through here. We're going to unclick all these. This is just their default. I, this is, I literally just downloaded this like a minute ago. So um, this is exactly what they have as you come out of the factory with their software. Unclick these. We don't want to create automatic fillers because we order fillers separately. We don't want fillers for angled connected cabinets. And we don't want automatic blind corner cabinets because we have special cabinets just for that. Also, the resize increment. We are not a three-inch increment cabinet company, people. If you've not known that, we are fully custom. There we go. 0.25. That means it's 0.25 inch or a quarter of an inch. Say OK and say done. So that's pretty much it. We are now up and running. Let's draw a couple of walls. If you didn't see where I just clicked, it's this guy right here in the corner. That is an exterior wall. Let's just draw a couple of walls however you want. I'm going to show you that you can make a whole bunch of different stuff going on here. And we're not going to care about the sizes because it doesn't really matter. All right, so I've drawn those wall. I've drawn, drew, drew those walls. Sorry, um, and then I am going to go over here, and I could always. I want to make this into a room, and a room is full, is all sides enclosed. So what I need to do is I need to enclose this, and I'm going to use the room divider. Normally, you can use any of these other walls. That's fine, interior or exterior wall. It doesn't matter, uh, but then do a room divider to try to enclose the two areas. Okay, and the reason for that is now when you click on this arrow key and you double click on this guy, you can then change the room type. And we're going to change that room type over to kitchen because that's what we're going to use for this. This is going to be a nice little kitchen. All right, everything else, kind of another cool area about this is now that we have a room set up, we can go to finished ceiling height. And that's what this guy is right there. Okay, let's just change that to something weird like 105.25 and F. So they did a pretty good job of explaining it. That's from the top of your finished floor to the underside of your uh, uh, the drywall on the ceiling. Okay, Say OK. And everything gets adjusted. And I'm going to show you how to, to see all of this in just one second by going up here to the second box over where it has a little camera. Okay, You can click the camera. That's fine. But the best way to do it, go to Perspective Full Overview. Look at that. Now, assuming you have a mouse and you have a trackball on that mouse, uh, go over here and click the orbit, and that's going to allow you to move this thing around. See what I'm doing? I'm making it all move around. I'm holding the button down, the left button, left mouse button, and I'm able to go in and out. I'm using my trackball. And other things to do here to look at how do you move this thing from one side to another. Hold the trackball down. Literally, I'm holding it down right now, and I'm moving the whole screen around. Just some basic stuff there. Play around with it. You'll see how it goes. Now you're probably wondering, that is not the size of my kitchen. That looks like it's insanely large. And you're right, it is. Uh, let's get back into this. We have a, a measurement tool. Uh, looks like a ruler. Uh, we're not going to use that, though. We're going to go to interior dimension. Okay. Click interior dimension. Pretty easy. Go over here on the left side of your screen. Sorry. And then just click and hold. And look, I'm just going to draw it all the way through here. No, notice how it gave us this interior dimension right here. Same thing right here. I want to probably adjust that because I don't think that's right. And then this guy right there. And you probably need another one this way. We're going to delete these here in a minute. So just bear with me. All right. So what we're going to do here is take this wall, and then we're going to click. I just clicked on this. I'm sorry. I hit the Select tool. This is the Select tool. Clicked on the wall. And then now the nice thing about this is not only can I change it like this by just saying, look, I'm going to do this. And you know, it's going to change it a little bit. You, know, you can see the, the measurement changing, uh, this guy right here, as I move that around. But another way to do it here to get it really dialed in, because you're not going to want to sit here and go, I just got it like 254 and a half. I don't know where I'm going. Okay, let's just go 254. Click on the thing and just put 254.25 or whatever your dimension is there. Again, go right here and then click on this and then just say like 94.875. See? Just does it all for you. 
click on this wall, and then you want it to be here, again, you can you can just go like this, I guess. But don't do that. Just just make it easy on yourself. Okay. So that's it. Now we got our interior dimensions. So this is all stuff. We got a really wide, not deep kitchen, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Also in a perspective view, you notice that if you track ball in, you know, rolling it forward, you can see. Look, we got a nice floor. We got some base molding. We got a ceiling. It's already starting to look like a kitchen. Cool. All right. So other ways to get through different views here. Number one, go up here and click on this little house. Let's say like cross section slash elevation. Click and dr drag. Again, I'm holding it down still. I'm gonna let go now. Boom. Notice up here we have three tabs now. There's that perspective view that we did earlier. Okay, that was the one right there, this 3D looking house. And then here is the front view. So when we add cabinets onto this view, you're gonna see them in all three, it's pretty cool. Good job, Chief Architect, keep it up. Again, you can do the same thing here. Say I need another elevation view, but I want one of that wall. There you go. Now I got all of the walls as needed. And again, you don't have to do this. In fact, you can delete those views by either closing out this and the X, use these little X buttons. Uh, or you can just go through here and you can click the elevation itself. Click. Notice how it's deleting those tabs. Pretty easy. Again, to get around on this screen, let's say I need to move this, you can either scroll ball out or track ball out on your mouse. I'm track balling in. Pretty cool. Hold the track ball down here at click, and then now you can move it around. Pretty sweet. All right, I don't need these dimensions anymore because we've already taken our measurements on site, and now we are done with those. Boom, we're done. And again, this is where your, your uh, drawing is. So t you could delete that, but I'm going to leave it open for now. Okay, so that's pretty much how you get your plan view down and how you get everything uh, going um, according to plan. So now let's get into the cabinet part. This is more of the fun part. Different ways to do it. I personally am more used to doing kitchen cabinets in a view like this where, if you notice, when you go to our catalog. Oh, I didn't show you how to install it. I'm sorry. Let me do that real quick. Uh, go up here to library. And then, obviously, you've already downloaded it, so because I showed you that earlier. So go to Import Library, right here. Import Library. And then just double-click on wherever. I put it on the desktop. That's the one I downloaded. Double-click on that. Or, or open. Whatever I do. And then it imports everything. 266 items have been imported. Wonderful. Now I have a duplicate. Great. All right, let's delete that. And it's going to delete everything and throw it all into the trash and make my screen look terrible. Not very professional. Sorry, guys. Emptying the trash. Okay, so that's it. Now, notice if you double click on Barker Cabinets, that's a catalog, it's in your user catalog. Notice we have kitchen, bath, doors, and drawer fronts. That's just for fun, so you guys can change those out. We'll get to that in the, be the last part of our video here. And wood finishes. Right now, we're only going to look at kitchen cabinets or bath cabinets. Obviously, we're doing a kitchen, but also notice this if you double click on kitchen, we have base, wall, and tall. It's three separate categories for different cab for different cabinets. If you double click on base, you're going to see all of our different base cabinets that we have available. We have standard, sink, appliance, appliance cases, but also notice that this is the exact same way that our website's set up. And our website has other tutorials for you to follow along with if you get stuck. For example, this shows you how to do everything. You need wall finished in, base finished in, all this other stuff right here on the top of the page. And then you go in here, you click on base. Notice it says standard sink, corner, appliance. Doesn't that look familiar? Standard sink, appliance, corner. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys are probably like, man, be quiet. All right. I am going here. I'm just going to pull out a base 90 cabinet. I'm going to toss it onto the old map. There we go. Now notice right here it goes and has, it's on the 3D view. You could technically go to window and split the screen, but I, I don't want to do that while I'm in YouTube here because Doing so makes everything really tiny. I'm going to try to make this as easy for you guys as possible. Or you can hit Shift F6. So if you hold the Shift button down and you go F6, it'll split the screen. And I just deleted my 3D view again. I'm going to go like this, and I got my 3D view back. Just repeating what it is. I'm holding my scroll ball down, I guess, and there you go. Let's draw a couple more cabinets, and then we'll do... I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick on how to get everything else moving around. Okay, so I just did another base. Let's go to the wall. Let's take a wall cabinet out. Now, most of you guys are thinking, well, I, I want to do this in 3D. Okay, let's do that. I've been dragging. I'm just used to dragging them out and doing it from a top view because I'm used to other programs like Cabinet Vision and whatnot that will make you do that. Of course, they are doing it now, so I can't really say they're not. But notice how you can, just, you can still drop them out or pull them out out of here as you'd like. 
Notice how all of these little pieces have something else you can do. Notice also, let's delete this. If you want, you can go through here. Odd. Yeah, usually this should be at 54 inches, so yeah, we'll double check that. All right, let's go here. I'm going to show you an elevation view again. Draw this elevation view. Let's take a look at it. 54 and 7 eighths. That's to the bottom of the finished floor if you look at that. Hmm, odd. Ah, let's draw our NKBA elevations. Okay, so first of all, I want to backtrack a little bit here. Let's go to our drawing here and go up to your measurement tools right here. And uh, we'll go to the next one over auto in NKBA auto elevation dimensions okay that's a nice little thing right here because if by doing that we can get exactly what everything's set up as notice it's 54 inches now notice if you go to our website and you go to wall cabinets and you go to standard for example or just go to wall cabinets it's going to show you how much we recommend everything to be done and this is typical NKBA standards uh, 34 and a half inch for the height of your base cabinets 54 inches is the height from the floor, top of the finished floor, to the bottom of the wall cabinets and whatnot. Uh, we'll get in there in a minute with another tutorial on design, but anyway, yeah, that's why I was getting held up there for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, go back to perspective view. We have a couple of wall cabinets. We have a couple of base cabinets. Now, fun stuff that you can do here. Say you want to do this. Let's delete this guy, but let's just say you were like, well, I don't like shaker white. I'm so bored with shaker white because everybody's got shaker white, and that's all we ever do. Okay. All right, let's go to doors and door uh, uh, doors and drawer fronts. Can't talk. And click the raised panel, and you get a pretty generic raised panel. Again, these are not raised panels like you know like our cabinets. It's just the generic one we're doing right now until we can get all of our door styles on there in future versions of BarkerCabinets.com catalog. But for now, you can also go in there. You can have a raised panel. You can have a shaker inset panel. You can go in here. You can change the. You can go to clear coat, espresso, or tamarack. Also, all of our paint colors. Say you wanted this raised panel and you want it to be dark gray. Notice how I'm spraying these? It's kind of cool. Pretty neat. Let's just say you don't like that and you're like, well, I don't really like that. I want to go more of a clear coat. What is that? Clear coat red oak? Is that what I chose? Yeah, clear coat red oak. Cool. Eh, no, I want to do clear coat maple. You can see how everything gets changed. And you can go through and you can change a lot of cabinets very quickly by doing that. So that is what the wood and finish category is on our website here. Now, let's just say, for example, you accidentally painted the interior cabinet. Oh, no, that's terrible. I, I left the cabinet case right there, pre-finished maple. So go back through there and, and spray it. And let's change this one over to Tamarack because it's confusing. All right, there we go. So have fun with that. That's how you would change the color of all of your cabinets. As far as changing the sizes of each cabinet, Go through here and you can either expand it like this. Notice how it's doing it at a quarter inch increment because out of our defaults, all of our defaults are set up at quarter inch widths and heights. So you'll be able to change everything over uh, as you see fit. All right, so that's pretty much it there. I got three cabinets there. Let's also go through and I'm gonna show you how to put together a list. And you're probably thinking, well, how do I get this list, you know, onto, the website for a quote, because I, I don't really care about doing the design. I just want to do a quote. Okay, cool. Go to tools and go to schedules and go to cabinet schedule and just place this thing. You put, most, a lot of people like to put it underneath, which is fine because it's going to be a running list. But I just dragged and dropped that. Now, this is serious default stuff, so I haven't changed in any of the, uh, the columns or anything like that. So some of the stuff is irrelevant. But you can see right here, as we have it, number. It's just your cabinet number uh, in the design, uh, label B2D, which is our code, so it's base two-door, for example. Quantity, you only have one of those. Uh, it's a two-door base cabinet, and then this is your size. You've got a 30-inch wide, 24 deep, and 34 inch and 34 and a half inches tall. So you take this, and then you copy and paste, and we do it again. Notice how it just updated. The quantity is now three. Everything is live right there, so let's open, let's take that thing and expand it a little bit, and it just added it to the end. Notice how it made it 36 inches. Pretty cool. So that's how you do it. Now, same thing with elevation view. You could put that on here if you wanted to, but again, that makes it really, um, you know, a lot of information. So that's how you get your list. Then you plug them in, take those, and you go, and you go, hey, I want a two-door wall cabinet. Uh, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to put the size in. That thing was 30 inches. 
and shaker that's fine i like that door and i like the light gray add to the cart get your quote and you are then done all right so that's pretty much it for our tutorial here we will have another tutorial out soon that allows us to do a full kitchen uh plan you know with design and i'll even do a tall appliance stack and show you how you can switch everything out and do some really fun stuff with chief architect and this extremely powerful 3d software Again, while you guys are out and you're playing around with this thing, feel free to check out the 3D views. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. You can do VR um, walkthroughs with this thing. I mean, there's I haven't really scratched the surface so much on 3D. I've just been putting together the uh, uh, the catalog so that you guys can get into it and you know have some fun. So ultimately, I try to build a lot of the uh, defaults into it here. So for example, um, you know, off the floor, we've got our elevation view. Notice that the wall cabinets come out and they're defaulted to 54 inches. So that's all there. All these guys right here, 34 and a half. Again, you can click on those and do whatever you want. Um, you know, sizes are pretty easy. And then also the way they look and the way they're constructed is uh, pretty accurate as well. Okay, so be sure to check the website for uh, limitations. For example, like you can't order like a wall cabinet at like 100 inches wide. That's just not, it's not something you do. Okay, so in the meantime, Feel free to check out our tutorials, and other than that, I hope you guys uh, enjoy the software. And yeah, I wish you the best, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Have a great day. Thank you.